Good afternoon, everyone. Y'all having a good time? Yes. Man, I am blown away by all the presenters who have graced this stage so far. I mean, wow. You agree? Yes. All right. We're going to keep that momentum going. I'm going to talk to you today about why diversity, equity, and inclusion still matters. Still matters, people. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Now, you heard Dr. Anthony Shannon earlier today. Persian kid, east side of Detroit. I am from the hood. East side, east side yes. <laughs> Full stop. You know, growing up in the hood, I had a yearning to get out of the hood. And I've heard a few speakers today say, yeah, I'm from the hood. I want to get out. But I also had this yearning to want to hang out with my friends and be with my family. But the yearning to go off to school was still there. They led me to Alabama A&M University. HBCU's in the house. Let me hear you. I know A&M is out there. But that also led me to corporate America. And in corporate America, I had this idea hitting that way that I'm going to have a big shiny desk, corner office, feet up on the desk, calling the shots. Big boss, right? Woof. Was I in for a rude awakening? I tell you, I did not know how corporate America was going to accept me or view me. You see, I'm tall. I'm Latino. Any Barriquas in the house? Puerto Rico? Come on, let me hear you. At least Caribbean. I know you're out there. All right, all right. So in corporate America, I've seen just about anything you can think of. And I'm, I've heard a few people say that today. You know, I was often viewed upon as intimidating. I'm a big guy. Let's face it. I'm embracing my facade, right? So I was intimidating mostly to white people. I'll say it. Because we all know we're in this world and we have a history in this country of systemic racism. It's no different in corporate America. No different at all. And I was put down a lot. I verbally, I've heard some people say that they were verbally dropped, you know, knocked down a peg. Dr. Daphne talked about, hey, do you think you have a PhD? Well, <laughs> you know, for me it was, you know, Bob had a great year. Maybe next year be your opportunity to shine. Wow. Stuff like that led, led me to code switching. Some people call it imposter syndrome. But code switching in a technical term by the Harvard Business Review, because I got to educate y'all, 2019, it is the practice of someone changing how they look, how they talk, how they walk, right? So as we know, when you go through this process, and a lot of folks who are brown, black like me, you can lose yourself going through this process. Now, I'm talking to the leaders out there in virtual space here in the room who are making decisions about their cultures. And we know that a lot of companies, because of the last two years, the pandemic and things of that nature, they're spending billions of dollars on, hey, we're doing this for this community. We're doing this for that community. That's lip service, right? DEI still matters. There's three things that I want you to walk away from today. DEI still matters. You're going to answer the question, why me and why now? Now, I've already given you the reason why it still matters. I struggle with code switching, believe it or not, I'm a board member. I'm a cyber pro. I've worked for more than 27 years in this profession, right? I struggled with that, believe it or not, until the early 2010s. What year are we in? 2022. So the next question, why me, is really directed towards the leaders that are out there that are running these corporations and organizations. You have to get into this DEI mindset. Oh, I'm sorry. DEI, diversity, equity, and there we go. 
D-E-I. If you're not into that mantra, that mindset, your company will not flourish because the data backs it up that if you have diversity in your culture, it does a few things. And a lot of leaders around the world believe this. Fosters innovation. Helps you attract and retain a diverse pool of top talent. HBCUs, right? That's what we're talking about. There's people in, our, in these schools that are talented. Mae Jamison, you know who she is? Anybody? Black astronaut. a and alum. Alabama a and Very talented people. So if you're not walking the walk when it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, you're going to struggle. But if you do, that persona that you as a leader, because you set that tone, will proliferate like wildfire throughout your organization. Why now was the third question, right? Keep me on point here, y'all, because I try to keep you going. Why now? Well, let me ask you, why not? Wouldn't you agree with me, folks, out there in here, that we've been doing this sort of thing for a few generations? Diversity, equity, and inclusion, or at least trying to be on equal footing with everybody, right? We can go back to the 60s. That's when affirmative action came onto the scene. That's kind of when they started talking about diversity and inclusion. Remember, equity is also the same thing. It's important. I'm going to leave you with this. If you feel that diversity, equity, and inclusion is still important and it still matters, I want to hear you clap. I want to hear it. Now, I'm not just talking about black folks here, right, or brown folks. It matters for everyone, no matter where you come from, if you have disabilities, if you're Asian, if you're a woman, if you identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, or non-binary, it matters. So to my leaders that are out there, if you are interested in enhancing or starting your DEI journey, seek me out. StanleyConsults.com is where you can reach me, or I'm on LinkedIn, Jermaine Stanley. I am passionate about helping leaders build, lead, launch initiatives that support diversity and inclusion in their organizations. Thank you. You've been a great audience.